welcome to Cheers to Fears, where we take horror films and turn them into drinking games. We're your two hosts. I'm Tucker. And I'm Alex. Today we will be making a drinking game for the Blair Witch Project, directed and written by Daniel Myrick and Eduardo Sanchez. There are a lot of polarizing opinions about this movie, and we talked about it a lot on this channel. So much so that we feel like we had to make a video on it, as it was one of the first found footage horror movies that kickstarted the entire genre. The Blair Witch Project follows Heather, Mike, and Josh as they go to film a documentary about the Blair Witch. They interview many of the townspeople as they are all sharing chilling stories about their town and its myths. From there, they decide to scout out some of the locations mentioned in the folklore, which results in them trekking deep into the woods. The further they travel into the woods, the more they get lost. The trio also starts to get harassed at night, causing their mental states to rapidly deteriorate as they start running out of food and water. Starting now, we will be talking about spoilers within the movie. If you have not already watched it, feel free to pause the video now and give the film a watch with our drinking rules, currently posted on screen. If spoilers do not bother you, or if you have already seen The Blair Witch Project, then let's move on to the drinking rules. So let's start off this drinking game, as always, with death. If you see a death, you take a sip, and this time it came to a total of 8 sips. So deaths included the 7 children that died, which was Mercy, so that only counted as 5. Mm -hmm. What he did is he took uh, the kids down in the basement by twos, and he made one face into the corner. Really? And then he would kill the other one. And then when he was done with that, he grabbed the one out of the corner and killed that one too. And those were the seven kids that were missing. And then they brought them out of the woods one at a time. And it just was a, a terrible thing. It just tore the whole community up. We obviously inclu included the main characters, which are Josh, Mike, and Heather. So that counted as three. Um, it's not set in stone that they died, but it obviously is interpreted that they did die from yeah, the it's advertising. Kind of implied. Yeah. And even like we almost missed one of the deaths, which was was it Josh's? It was Josh's, because he just kind of gets removed from the film. He might come back, who knows? So we almost forgot to count that as well. Yeah, because he was missing or whatever. Yeah, he was myth missing, but not confirmed dead. Even though he saw his like teeth, but he still yeah. heard his yells and everything. Mm -hmm. Now let's move on to the next rule, which is screams, cries, and yells. And this came to a total of twenty-one sips. Yeah, and it's pretty much non-existence in the beginning. Yeah. Um, there is some when they're arguing, kind of, where they're kind of raising their voice at each other, but it's yeah. almost exclusively to the second half of the movie where the arguing ramps up, the intensity where, you know, they're getting harassed, yeah. and they're always screaming and crying and stuff. So it gets ramped up in the second half for sure. Yeah, quite a bit. In the beginning, there's almost no screaming, crying, and yelling within, like, the first 30 minutes. And then when they go into the woods, start to get more worked up, they do start scream, crying, and yelling more. Mm-hmm. You want to see the mouth? God damn it! Shush. If we keep our heads together, we'll be just fine. Fucking bullshit! Mike, chill. Just relax, Mike. Don't fucking tell me to relax! So let's move on to rule number three. It's whenever the Blair Witch is mentioned, and this happens 11 times in the movie. Uh, we're doing a documentary yeah. about the Blair Witch. Oh. Oh, have you heard of the Blair Witch? Oh yeah, that, that's an old, old, old story. This is kind of the opposite for screaming, crying, and yelling, actually. This happens a lot at the beginning, but not so much at the end. Yeah, exactly. It's when all the townsfolk are talking about the, the legend of the Blair Witch, for example, and how they're going to make a documentary about it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah, it's mostly in the beginning. I don't think it ever happens in the end, even. Yeah, definitely. Let's move on to rule number four which has a little bit to do with screaming, crying, and yelling. It's whenever they argue, and that came to a total of nine sips. Fucking get it! Fuck off me, man! What the fuck are you out of your fucking mind? Oh, I'm not out of my mind! Right. I'm not right. doing shit! You real? I'm not to you, but I'm doing a fuck that nine sips! I'm sorry! You are a fucking asshole! I'm sorry! Yeah, they argue quite a bit. There's obviously a lot of arguments, but there being nine. Nine, like, collective arguments. We don't include if they're in the same scene and then multiple people are arguing it's just one argument at that yeah. point um but yeah they do get pretty heated at times and they kind of are yelling at each other for getting lost or the map's gone or you know there's different things but it it happens quite a lot and speaking of the map it leads us to our next rule rule number five it's whenever the map is mentioned or seen this happens seven times and it's mentioned a lot more, especially when Mike destroys the map. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which he's like hysterical, laughing about it, and then finally admits that he kicked it into the creek and then they just lose it. Uh, Heather starts screaming at him and while she's crying at the same time, and it's pretty intense when that happens. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, it's... I don't know why he would do that, because it's basically their only 
tool for survival or tool for getting out of there at that point. Yeah, that's assuming if the witch obviously exists, and obviously it's left up to a little bit of interpretation if the witch does or doesn't exist. For the most part, I think almost everyone does, but I feel like there can be like some theories or anything like that if, uh, if, if it was just like the townspeople wanting to like shut them up about the myth. Who knows, things like that. I feel like it could be, I'd say, a decent theory. Maybe. Yeah. Let's move on to the next rule, which is whenever anything is made out of wicker is seen, you take a sip. And that came to a total of 11. Yeah, so some examples of this are like, there's gates made out of it, other handmade things that you see throughout. But I think the most prominent one is like the stick figures that you see yeah. in the forest. Uh, they're hanging in trees. There's the scene where they're placed in front of their tent. Those are the ones that stick out the most. Yeah, and there was the one uh, mystery box that came packaged with Josh's teeth. <laughs> and that was the other one. Yeah. I think for the most part, that was it for wicker, anything wicker. <laughs> yeah. On to rule number seven, it's whenever you see a camera. This happens 12 times in this movie. Obviously, uh, this movie inspired other movies in the found footage genre, such as Paranormal Activity. As you can see, this is a Paranormal Activity rule. Yeah, exactly. And it's I think it's something that can go along with found footage a lot of the times. So obviously, not every time, but in a lot of instances, this could be a rule for found footage. Yeah, especially ones with multiple cameras. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on to the next rule, which is whenever the gang takes a break, you take a sip, and that came to a total of 12. Yeah, and not only when they just stop, you know, to have a drink of water or just rest for a few minutes, it also includes when they set up tent for the night. Yeah, and that was, I'd say, almost a majority of the rules. I'd yeah. say at least five. Now let's move on to rule number nine, and it kind of goes hand in hand along with arguing. It's whenever they talk about how they're lost, and this happens eight times. All I'm saying is that you got us lost, man. For a very brief amount of time. Okay. Just don't get us lost in Yeah, serious. Why not? Mm-hmm. Not too much else to say about that rule, so let's move on to the last rule that we have for this drinking game, which is whenever the camera is mentioned. If the camera is mentioned, you take a sip, and that came to a total of 11. What? Nothing. I don't know why you have to have every conversation on video, man. Tapes man. Because we're a documentary. Not about us getting lost. We're making a documentary about a witch. And again, this is another rule from Paranormal Activity. Again, it's an, kind of another found footage trope. Whenever there's cameras, they're gonna mention them. So mm -hmm. it, it can be used again in a lot of found footage films, I think. Yeah, definitely. And that wraps up all the rules for this drinking game. Our total number of sips this time around came to 110, which is the equivalent of drinking three and a half standard 12 ounce cans based off our 30 sip per can scale. So let's start off with some other rules that we probably could have made for the drinking game. Uh, starting with black and white camera. Uh, when it cuts to the footage of the black and white yeah, camera. Yeah, when it cuts to the footage of black and white camera. Uh, other rules, such as direction being said, like north, west, yeah. east, south, I feel like that could have been a good rule. Or whenever you see like piles of rocks, all mm -hmm. those could have been great rules for this drinking game. So if you want to add them to your own, uh, feel free. Yeah, uh, if you wanted to make it more difficult, um, keep in mind that the more rules you add, the more you gotta keep track of, and mm -hmm. the more it takes you out of the movie, but yeah. Eh, if you want to drink more to this movie, I would recommend adding them. Yeah. So I think the first point that we should talk about with this movie is its legacy. That's mm -hmm. what people always talk about. Um, obviously, it had a huge impact on the horror genre and found footage genre specifically. Yeah. It basically made it into an actual subgenre of horror yeah. and popularized it and made it a big phenomenon. And it'd be kind of silly for us to deny that because it objectively had such a huge impact on this on the genre as a whole and you know we have respect for it in that sense yeah definitely um you don't have to like it but obviously you can't really ignore the global impact that it did have at the time yeah so upon the release of this movie it was obviously such a global phenomenon and everybody thought that the movie was real so much so that some people were contacting heather's mom like the actor that played Heather, yeah. contacting her mom and like giving her sympathy cards because they thought that her daughter died. And yeah. it's just unreal that that even happened because even in the credits, it says that this entire <laughs> film was fictitious. Yeah, I watched it again just because like, I'm like, I'm not sure if they could get away with it legally. So I watched the entire end of credits. It's like the only time I've ever done that for pretty much any show on Netflix because it immediately skips ahead. But I'm like, no, I, I've got to watch the credits to see if it says anything. Mm -hmm. 
and it just said, yeah, movie's entirely fictitious. And like, well, I guess people walked out of the theaters too fucking soon then and, of sent, course, and yes. went through the effort of sending Heather's mom cards. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, about the movie itself, I think it aged absolutely horribly and not a lot happens in the film, which is why I disliked it, especially watching it like 10 years after its initial release. Yeah. I don't know if it necessarily aged horribly in my opinion. Like even when I first watched it, like probably a decade ago at this point, uh, I wasn't into it then and I'm still not into it. And I think the main reason for that is A, I wasn't around when it was released. Well, I was around, but I didn't watch it when it was released. So I yeah. wasn't a part of the phenomenon and uh, the hype and stuff. And I think it's cause I was spoiled by other movies. So like, for example, I saw Paranormal Activity before I saw this. And in Paranormal Activity, you see stuff moving. You see yeah, you creepy stuff you happening. You see things actually happen. Like, it's not much, but you see Katie get, like, dragged out of bed down the stairs. Yeah, exactly. And because I saw that happening before Blair Witch, mm. I feel like that kind of hindered my experience with it. Um, and, like, I've tried watching this movie seriously. You know, shut all the lights off. Watch it alone. Just... Yeah shut all your phone off and everything and just pay complete attention to it and i still can't get into it too much and i think it's just because not a whole lot happens like the actress that plays heather does a really good job i feel like expressing her emotions yeah in some scenes more than others but i i feel like there's the beginning scenes where it feels like she's just trying to be so much of an actor and predominant it feels like in a lot of scenes even when she's not acting like on camera up until like i'd say the last third of the movie she's trying to be like too big of an actor she's like we're going to trek through the woods well and she says it in like such a stern like but attitude she, but she's <laughs> talking like that in the sense that she's creating this documentary yeah yeah so she always I, feels like believable. she's on camera but yeah it's believable yeah. i think <laughs> It just threw me off for a fact for a little bit. It, it, it made it seem like funny. Yeah, that's fair. So when we say that there's like nothing that happens in the movie of substance, I know that there's one specific part in the movie that they just kind of forgot, which is I know that there's some there was supposed to be like somebody in a white gown that they were supposed to pan to when Heather was saying like what is that what is that and they just forgot to pan uh, towards it and just left it out of the movie <laughs> and I feel like that would have made a much bigger impact because at least we see something and something happens yeah so it would have been like finally something fucking happened but here yeah. again I probably also devil's advocate I probably would have been bitching about like oh all you see is some bitch in a white dress and like that's it i think a, a lot of people probably like it without seeing it because you know you leave it up to your imagination on what they're actually experiencing and stuff yeah. and putting a putting an image to what they're experiencing can ruin it in a lot of cases uh, yeah that's fair too so i know i mentioned how the acting was pretty decent i thought at least most of the time mm -hmm. um and i think that actors like the cast and the directors did a pretty good job for what they had available to them. What bugs me out is that we're so damn deep in the woods and people are gonna try and, and come out here and mess with us, then they gotta have something wrong with them and I'm not gonna play with that. Well, how do we know it was people? Well, even if it wasn't, I'm not gonna play with that either. And obviously they had a pretty low budget. Like, I'm pretty sure this was the highest profitable movie of all time. I think so. And so that just goes to show they didn't have a ton to work with, but I feel like they did a pretty good job for the time it was made and the resources they had. The cast did a pretty good job of acting overall, I would say. It was just the subject matter wasn't too interesting to me, mm -hmm. which was its downfall, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like there could have been some things a little bit more fleshed out. But I feel like the strongest part of the movie was the interviews and everything like that leading up to them going into the woods. After they got into the woods, I feel like it was just a, a lot of nothing happening. I did like the folklore part more, and I wish they had more of that. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. It felt more genuine, I'd say, rather than them being in the woods and stuff it, it kind of felt unbelievable at times whereas when they're interviewing the townsfolk it felt real like they were actually trying to make a documentary yeah. of this thing and i feel like the directors did a good job of trying to instill fear into their actors is one thing so such as uh in the movie itself they were the ones kind of fucking with them in the middle of the night and i don't think they knew what was going to happen so the reactions were genuine I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And on top of that, they just did things such as like shaking the tent or the noise from outside. So it was it was neat for sure, to say the least. Yeah, and I feel like because of the 
the budget they were working with, this was a good tactic to use, albeit not necessarily the best approach to harass your cast, yeah. but <laughs> it was an effective way for the most part, honestly. Yeah, and like they did other things, such as leave them without food, like less and less food each day, right. so they would get more cranky, yeah. <laughs> and then they'd lash out on each other, so that was probably playing a little bit of a part into t them fighting. Yeah, exactly. You're lost. You're angry in the woods, and no one here is here to help you. There's a fucking witch, and she keeps leaving shit outside your door. There's no one here to help you. She left little trinkets. You fucking took one of them. She ran after us. There's no one here to help you. We walked for 15 hours today. We ended up in the same place. There's no one here to help you. That's your motivation. So I know we've briefly said our opinions on this movie overall, but what is your overall thoughts on this film? So I didn't like it because I didn't grow up with it. If I grew up with it, like if I was in like born in 1985 or something like that, I'd probably like this movie a lot more. But obviously, <laughs> there was so much hype towards it, and it greatly, greatly let me down. Yeah. Um. Nothing really scared me. Like generally, a few visuals kind of do it for me, but there was absolutely nothing in the movie. So obviously, didn't grow up with it, so I can't really have a fair opinion on the movie. Yeah, and I'm kind of similar. I didn't grow up with it. I've seen many other found footage movies before I even watched this one. Um, I can respect it for what it did with the horror genre and respect the hell out of it for being a pioneer in it. And so yeah, I'll give it credit where credit's due in being so formative in the genre. But going back and watching the movie, I just not that entertained by it. I never really did like it all that much. Like there's obviously good things about it. Like the acting was pretty decent at times. Um, like we said, the directors did a good job working with what they had. But overall, since I've seen so many modern horror movies that, I guess, like I said, have spoiled me, I just like them better than what this offered to me. Yeah, that's completely fair. So now that you got our overall thoughts, let's move on to the award ceremony, where we award one not-so-lucky nominee, the Darwin Award. This award goes out to a character who made a stupid decision that resulted in them getting killed, somebody else getting killed, or simply resulting in something bad happening that could have been easily avoided. This award can also be given out to a character that is just plain dumb. Here are the nominees. Today's first nominee is Heather for going into the woods with little to no planning, making it easier for her and her friends to get lost. The other nominee today is Mike for destroying the map. Sure, he might not have been able to read it, but the other people who was with him could read it and could have helped them get out of the forest. And the winner is... Mike. Really, no surprise here, as he destroyed one of the only things that could possibly lead them back to civilization. And with all that being said, we hope you enjoyed our look into the Blair Witch Project. If you end up playing the game alongside the movie, or if you have any other feedback or suggestions, let us know in the comments below. Also, let us know in the comments if you think the movie has aged as much as we think it did. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next week's episode where we are going to be making a drinking game for Dr. Sleep. If you want to check out our most recent video, click on the box on the top right. Or if you want to see a playlist of all the drinking games and movies we review, click on the box below it. Thanks for tuning in, and this is us saying cheers, cheers to fears. fears.